Hey guys, Kian here, and welcome to the Rocket Hideout. Today, we're here to bring you another Pokemon Coliseum video. This is the history of Wes and the Ore region, and today's video is brought to you by Otakus Unite, the number one Facebook page for aesthetics and anime, so enjoy. Pokemon has arrived on the Nintendo GameCube. Using the Nintendo GameCube Game Boy Advance cable, you can connect your Game Boy Advance Pokemon Ruby or Sapphire to the Nintendo GameCube and transfer your own Pokemon into the Coliseum to do battle. Pokemon battle it out in all new environments with spectacular effects. Not only can you engage in epic battles, but Pokemon Coliseum also contains a brand new RPG adventure. Experience Pokemon like never before in full 3D. Pokemon Stadium was just the beginning, and now the battle continues. Only Pokemon Coliseum can handle battles this big. So back on the GameCube, a new Pokemon title was released on November 21st, 2003. The title was later revealed to be Pokemon Coliseum, an exclusive Pokemon game set on the GameCube where you can steal other trainers' Pokemon and explore a new region followed by a unique sequel later on called Pokemon XD Guild Darkness. These games will later become fan favorites even though they are considered spin-off games and these games have the ability to trade between these GameCube games and the GBA games like Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Ruby, Sapphire, and the Emerald titles as well. The whole premise of the game is that you start off playing off as a character named Wes. Wes is a pretty cool and interesting character because he's known in the Ore region to be the best Pokemon Snagger. What's a Snagger? Well, Snagger is someone who steals Pokemon. He belonged to a team called Team Snagum, a ruthless group of Pokemon thugs intent on stealing and profiting off stolen Pokemon, along with developing new tech and helping Team Cypher, who is another evil team in the region, to help create Shadow Pokemon. Shadow Pokemon are Pokemon whose heart are essentially closed, making them attack trainers and other Pokemon alike using hate and anger. Games never go in depth into Wes's past, but on Bulbapedia, it says that he's a young man, so I'm assuming he's in his early to mid 20s, mostly due to the fact that he's already out there stealing and being part of a gang, a gang of Pokemon thugs. On top of that, he has a hover bike, so I'm assuming if the world is like ours, you can start driving from the age of 16, but most likely he may be over 18. I would put him as 20 or 21. Wes also goes by many names. In the Pokemon Coliseum Snatcher Leo manga, he also goes by the name of Leo, which is also a default name that you can pick when you start the game. Why is his name Leo? I have no idea, but for personal taste, I like the name Wes better. Also, Wes in this manga is pretty crude and has a pretty interesting taste in humor and battling, only because there are some adult jokes within the manga which I think is pretty hilarious and caught me off guard due to how crude and funny it was. But this also gives some sustenance to Wes's age as well because a kid wouldn't really be making adult jokes or acting like an adult unless you're like going through puberty or something, but that's for like a different discussion. Anyways, Wes's hometown is unknown and from our knowledge, he has no relatives. He's a trainer, but is classified as a player character. Other than that, that's pretty much like who Wes is and what we know of him. Wes ended up getting caught up in Shadow Pokemon because he met a girl named Rui, who can see the aura of Pokemon and can detect Shadow Pokemon. For Team Cypher, this puts a niche in their plans because she can see what Pokemon they were turning into Shadow Pokemon. Along with that note, Wes also has the prototype Snag Machine, which he stole from Team Snagum, his own team. He ended up blowing up their base, blowing up their giant Snag Machine, and stole the smaller Snag Machine for personal uses. He really wasn't going to help the Ore region to be honest, but due to meeting Rui, he felt obligated. And after saving the region, he was praised as a hero, and that's the last we really saw of Wes. 
After defeating Team Cypher, Wes, I believe, left the region, and the main villains in charge with the Shadow Pokemon development program had lost their grip over the region and then went into hiding, until Michael, a young boy who lives at Professor Crane's lab with his mother and sister Lily, comes along in the sequel XT Guild of Darkness and destroys them once more. In XT Guild of Darkness, Team Cypher comes back with a vengeance and successfully transforms Lugia into a Shadow Pokemon. Now equipped with the third SAG machine ever seen or created, Michael rescues the region from being plagued by evil once more, but this time he has new allies and new equipment that helps him on his journey. Equipped with lab tech, Michael follows in Wes's footsteps and captures the Shadow Pokemon, destroys Team Cypher, and brings the region back to normal. The cool thing about Michael is that he's a lot younger, and we as players are used to seeing a younger Pokemon trainer as our character. Besides his age, which he looks to be about 12 to 13 years old, was also helping in the development of the third snag machine, and was helping Professor Crane and his mother at the Pokemon lab, figuring out about the purification process of Shadow Pokemon since the region was plagued by them before. Despite constantly researching and helping the lab, Michael was also trained by the lab to be an amazing Pokemon trainer and did what Wes couldn't, which was purify Lugia which is an impressive feat all on its own. His main partner is an Eevee, which I think is notable since Wes had an Ombreon and an Espeon, so it makes sense that in a lawless region to give the character a Pokemon that can evolve into many different types. To conclude this video, I'll add a couple more points which I think is pretty notable in the history of this game in terms of lore. First, Rui has connections to Celebi and her grandfather is Egon who watches over the relic slash shrine of the relic force, which in this game is used to purify Pokemon by calling Celebi. So she's really important, plus she can see Shadow Pokemon and Team Cypher is also after her and trying to kidnap her. Next, the timeline of the game is interesting as well because the first game takes place between generations 2 and 3. So the majority of the Pokemon found in, this, in the first game is mostly made up of Generation 2 mods to compensate the lack of Johto Pokemon, since they didn't really remake Gold, Silver, or Crystal during this time, which they later remade the game in Generation 4. But the second game, Exegil of Darkness, sets a few years right before Generation 4, right before Diamond and Probe was released in 2006 and 2008, and between both Colosseum and Exegil of Darkness, there's also a time skip of a couple years. This is cool because you get to see Bonsley and Munchlax in the Pokemon Battle Bingo, and the Battle Bingo was a feature in the game, not counting Mount Ember, you know, a battle feature. And outside of the battle feature, we also get to see these two Generation 4 mons in the storyline and post-game, which I think is sick in my opinion. Other than that, I hope you guys liked this video on some of the lore and history of the game. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and if not, then hit that dislike button too, because that helps me as well as a lot because I look at all the comments. And tell me in the comments below what I should do better or what your opinion is on the game. We also have a Discord server open to anyone who ever wants to. It will be in the description below if you want to join. We talk about everything in the server. It's a social hub. We explore different games, lore, and or just like a chill out spot that we use for us. Anyways, this is Keon from the Rocket Hideout, signing off.